John Harwood here. He's going to chide liberals. How dare you? How dare you oppose the wisdom of Washington? Let's watch uh, clip number 11. So in the end, how did this deal get done, John? Contessa, it was really hand-to-hand -hand combat and hand-to-hand -hand diplomacy, one vote at a time, finally securing the vote of Joe Lieberman by ditching that Medicare buy-in that he was against and uh, Ben Nelson with the abortion language. But I got to say, Contessa, just because so, so much of the commentary I've heard has been really idiotic, liberals who want universal health care ought to be thanking Harry Reid for uh, uh, getting this thing done rather than talking about what's inadequate in the bill. I'm not saying the bill is a good bill, but if you're a liberal and you want universal coverage in this country uh, and think that you could do better, that Harry Reid can do better than what he's done or the White House can do better, they ought to lay off the hallucinogenic drugs because we have had a vivid demonstration of the limits of political possibilities on this issue. Strong language there, uh, John. All right, I know. Everybody who doesn't agree with conventional wisdom in Washington is, of course, an idiot. How dare you challenge Washington? conventional wisdom. You know that they were always right in Washington. When they said, hey, everybody agrees we should go to Iraq, well, they nailed it. And the list goes on and on, right? Now uh, we're delusional and we're apparently on some sort of drugs if we don't agree with the bill. John, look, there are good points made in the other direction. You can't just call people idiots. In fact, on the other side, when people make the good points about fee for services, etc., I say they do. Okay, and it's not a black and white issue, and it's certainly not black and white in favor of the bill. So, for example, he says, "Oh, well, hey, liberals, we just gave you universal coverage. What more do you want?" Right? Well, first of all, you gave it to us through a mandate where we have to buy it from private insurance and pay our money for it. So I mean, it's like saying, "All right, everybody gets a car now, pay me for it." Well, did you really give me a car? I don't know. I paid for it, right? And then the second problem with that is they say, "All right, but look, we're giving you subsidies." so that we're helping you pay, to pay for that car in that analogy or in this in the real case pay for health care okay great what happens when the subsidies run out you think that the republicans will just automatically renew the subsidies i don't think they will i mean look at what they did with welfare etc and the other thing is one of our listeners made this point you know it's partly demeaning to go in and say okay i'm sorry i'm too poor i only make fifty thousand a year or sixty thousand a year or forty thousand a year whatever it is can you please please government give me subsidies so i can take that money and give it to private insurance so that my family members don't die it, instead what would have been smarter is to address the underlying problem but if when you go to talk about that people like john harwood and the uh, washington establishment say you're an idiot and how dare you, how dare you oppose uh, the powers that be. It's really disturbing. What we're trying to do, John, is trying to tell you you're going the wrong way, okay? Now, look, I've explained this before. The House legislation uh, on financial reform is sorely lacking, okay? It, it, derivatives is the number one problem, and they have two giant low, uh, loopholes in their addressing of uh, derivatives. So, uh, they did a poor, poor job of addressing that. And the other issues of financial reform, they go a quarter of the way, right? But I'm not against the House bill on financial reform, even though I think financial reform is more important and more urgent. Why am I not against the House version? Because, yes, if we have 100 miles to go, they've gone about five miles. But at least they're going in the right direction. And then we can go, as Obama says about health care, we can go another five miles, another ten miles. Hopefully we speed it up a little bit because we could have a financial disaster on our hands before we get there. But at least they're going in the right direction. Now, when you bring me this health care reform bill, say, hey, pass it, pass it, pass it. You're an idiot if you don't pass it. Uh, because uh, at least you're getting universal coverage. I say, I know, but at what cost? At the cost of making the current broken system stronger. So I'm not going five miles this way or 25 miles this way. I'm going in the wrong direction. So it's going to take me more time to pull you back to where we were. That's what we're upset about. Now, you guys know I love this clip, for those of you who have been watching this a, a long time. It's from uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, John Candy and Steve Martin start heading the wrong way. So in this analogy, uh, Steve Martin is Barack Obama. Uh, John Candy is Rahm Emanuel, okay, and we're the guys in the car, Howard Dean, Jane Hampshire, Young Turks, etc., telling them, you're going the wrong way, and they think we're crazy. 
This is the perfect analogy for this. Let's watch. the race. Oh, race? That's ridiculous. All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Put your window down! You want something? Uh, probably drunk. You're going the wrong way! What? You're going the wrong way! He says we're going the wrong way. Oh, he's drunk. How would he know where we're going? Yeah, how would he know? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Terrific. Thank you. <laughs> what a moron. You're going in the wrong direction. You're going to kill somebody. That's what we want to avoid. That look right there, as <laughs> they're like, oh, it turns out those guys were right. But John Candy in that scene isn't just Rahm Emanuel, he's John Harwood, he's the entire Washington establishment that's like, oh, what, what would they know where we're going? <laughs> You're right, okay. Moron, you want to race? No, we're trying to help you. We're trying to help you. But you're not listening, so... You can unfortunately look forward to those uh, two 18-wheelers coming in your direction.